Absolutely. So, sir, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm fading a little bit. Yeah, I <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be honest. I, I am getting tired here. A lot of people ask me, oh, is your, is your throat going to be sore? And I've been saying sore throat is a mindset, but no, I'm feeling. Well, that's good to know because <laughs> I woke up this morning and I called my wife and I just went, this is not going to be good audio for the podcast. And I didn't have to talk to people all week like you did. So oh, I'll need to learn your well, tricks. Well, we got the microphone. So you're, you're doing well. You're doing okay so far. I can hear you. I awesome. can hear you loud and clear. So you're good. Um, so you're at 1248, right? So tell us a little bit about 1248 for people that don't know. Yeah, I've been fortunate to be on with you before. And if anyone's yeah. listened then, it's changed a little bit. I'm okay. going through the, through the process of figuring out exactly where I want to be all right. solving the problem. But yeah. Um, Modex was actually a really good show for me to figure nice. that out. Yeah. Um, I realized that uh, there's a lot of people out there that run fulfillment, mm. either in-house or are doing it as a third-party fulfillment provider who aren't large players but are really good at what they do. Yeah. And they are looking to scale, and mm. what they need is help with the stuff that isn't moving the boxes, right? Yeah, you know, absolutely. People who are going from one facility to multiple facilities or experiencing growth because they're executing really well mm -hmm. and so what i look to bring to them is uh how do you start to take care of all the administrative control and all the managerial control mm -hmm. that is the grease that makes the operation run right yeah. so how do you focus on labor planning effectively have, now you have a lot of devices and a lot of equipment that's right. a big capital expenditure how do you make sure those have the longevity that you need and that you're right sized on that mm -hmm. um and then that allows you to start to focus on okay now we can now look at operations because we're labor planning effectively we're using mm -hmm. the right systems and have the right visibility and we don't work off assumptions and gut feel, but we're starting to work off some data mm -hmm. without having to drop a whole lot of money. Yeah. Um, and I've been really impressed with some of the booths that maybe get, we'll call them flyover booths at the show, yeah, yeah. who have really good solutions mm -hmm. for people that are in that market that yeah. aren't necessarily looking to be on the leading edge, mm -hmm. but are looking to go from where they are to what the next step would be better is. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's, I mean, it's, there's just so many different solutions here. It's a little, it's a little crazy, right? We could say, it. but yeah, I mean, I think that's such a important point that you made there because there are so many of these smaller, you know, boutique type kind of three PLs, and you know, we're talking a little bit about this with uh, the other Joe, Joe Spizak, okay. on uh, yesterday a little bit, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's you know, a lot of times we see, I think that, and, and I think you and I were talking about this the other the other night, right? I mean, it, you see where you have these companies and you know, they just kind of maybe fell into being a 3PL in, in some aspects. Either they started like an e-commerce brand and they just had bad experiences with 3PLs and they're like, oh, I could do this myself or they just decided to do themselves. And then a friend was like, oh, can you do it for me? And, and they don't necessarily have that operations background and understand those kind of little nuances and, and little things in between that could really take their business to a, a different level right and i think that's a great thing that you're, you're recognizing and and trying to trying to help with there and and so as we kind of look at the the show here and you know i talked about some of these these booths i mean what's uh what have you seen that's really exciting for you yeah i think for me the stuff that was exciting like i said was, was mm. the booth that people were falling into because across the way there was <laughs> yeah. really cool robotics that were happening and yeah. there was just 10 people deep um but i was looking at things that are high high value right mm -hmm. so uh, a lot of the customers that i work with are in in entrepreneurial mindset and have been really gritty and that's why mm -hmm. they've been able to be really good yeah but they are restricted by cash and so they need right. to make sure that if they're parting ways with that cash and with that profitability that they've had that they're getting some level of return on it mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily need to be right away but they need to feel comfortable and with a lot of the people that I work with, some of that is as simple as <laughs> we don't know where stuff is yeah. because we have stuff everywhere. Right. right. And so you have, I know one of your, one of the people who support you for a really long time is Mighty Tape. Oh, yeah. Right? Mighty Tape? Mighty Line. All right. Mighty, Mighty Line. Line. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Mighty Line. Um, <laughs> made sure I didn't trip when I stepped into the booth, yeah. right, with the custom tape. But, mm -hmm. you know, they're here. They have a really big presence. Right. And what I talk with a lot of people about is a tape on the floor may seem like it wouldn't make a big deal. Yeah. But when you start getting some organization, you start to see where problems are. You mm. start to see where things pile up. You start to see when things are out of place and you start to understand what's going on. And that's the first step into you know, control can have a negative connotation, especially mm. from a managerial standpoint, but that control of what is happening in the operation and do I know where to place my time, right? right. So I made sure I went there. There's people that, are, so I, sorry to the, to the booth, I forget what the name is, right? But yeah. they do signage. Mm, they don't right. do signage where they print it for you. They do signage where you get the equipment so you can print on demand. 
yeah. right? And you can print your labels when you need to. And when you need to pivot really quickly, you can do that. That's a low capital investment that gives mm. you a lot of flexibility. And yeah, it's not as cheap as printing it out and putting packing tape over top of it yeah. on the floor, but it's going to last you a whole lot longer. Right. Right. And so, and that could be the difference for a customer that comes in that wants to do a walkthrough and takes you from that level of, hey, we can get it done to, hey, we can get it done. And we have a level of professionalism that you're not going to mm. see in the same price point. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's such a great point too. It's like these, these small little things that can make a, a huge difference. And, and like you said, you know, you don't think, uh, uh, you know, I, I guess a, an outsider or, a, you know, a, a civilian, someone was calling them the other day outside the warehouse <laughs> industry, right? I mean, it, they don't, uh, you know, they're going to think tape, like what difference is tape going to make, right? right? But it does when you start to get that visualization and you start to get the organization like you talked about, it does call out, call out those things and it, and it makes things clearer too. And, and I know you're a big proponent too for, um, you know the the uh, I guess the work experience for, for yeah. the worker themselves. So so tell us a little bit about maybe or are you seeing anything out here that you think is a really cool solution to to help the employee on the floor themselves? Yeah, I, there's some things that are cool, and then mm. there's some things that are no brainers that you just don't yeah. realize, right? Um, to go back before that, right? The employee experience for me, the people I'm working with, mm. labor. Well, I mean everyone if you're in this industry, labor is your biggest cost. Yeah, yeah. But for them, they often are also in markets where the labor pool isn't very large. Mm. Right? And so the way that they can really get a flywheel moving for their business is by having a good employee experience. So there is good retention because now you have less turnover in your employees and productivity rises. And so without moving facilities, you gain capacity. Yeah. Right. Without doing anything, you have way less time spent training people. Right. Mm. Less turnover, less people coming in best people are not training your good people, right? That's a double whammy on productivity. So as you improve employee experience, right, and that's a loaded word, but mm. as you make it a place where people want to be and feel involved and like taken care of, they stay. Mm. And that helps you in your profitability. And that doesn't show up on the billing at the end of the month, right? Yeah. It doesn't show up in a line item in, in the PL when you're looking at PL. But over time you see the momentum from that and mm. it has this knock on effect. Um, which a lot of people understand, but it's hard to put in practice. Yeah. But think about this, right? I'm in North Carolina. North Carolina in the summer can get really hot and really muggy. Yeah. If I'm a small provider, I'm probably in a smaller or a more dated mm. warehouse facility. Fans. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Everyone knows big ass fans is out there. Right. Right. That's phenomenal for some solutions, but I may not need, I may not be able to put that in because of my lease, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But there are two people I went by today and again, forgot their names. I'll, I'll talk about a lot of these solutions <laughs> yeah. down the road. Sure. Um, probably I'll drop them into a post on the, on the blog for you. But, yes. yeah. um, you know, they have fans and fans can put out high output, mm. right? It can pull cold air in the winter because you can reverse them, mm. right? Just like you would in your house. Yeah. And they're under 1500 bucks. Yeah. Right. You put four of those in. Yeah. Well, four, that's $6,000. Okay. It's, at a minimum, eight thousand dollars to replace an employee when yeah. you put in all the costs, yeah. right? So if you save one employee, you paid off those, right? Right. Um, other things too, right? Same concept. It's a nylon tube that attaches mm. to a fan that takes right. it all the way down a line and goes out there. Yeah. 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 The fan was like five hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. And the tube was four dollars a foot. Yeah. I mean, that's a no. That, that's one of those things where it's like. Oh my gosh, I wish I would have thought of this. That would have been a whole lot easier for me in my bank account <laughs> than trying to go out and do it yeah, yeah. on my own, right? But sometimes it's not the sexy stuff that make warehouses sexy, right? Right. You yeah. know, it's doing the stuff that makes an impact mm -hmm. that it then allows you to put profitability back into your business. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you start looking at the people that have automation, right? And yeah. you start looking at some other stuff. Um, so I've been really impressed with um, some things like that, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of vendors here who when I say I support small, medium-sized boutique type operations, their eyes light up because that's what they are and that's who they want to support too. So they try really hard yeah. to make affordable solutions for the people. They know they're not the best technology. Here. That's not their goal. Yeah. Right. Their goal is to help somebody else move the industry forward mm. in a better way. Yeah. Right. And that's been a big focus for everyone here. Right. It's sustainability is a big topic that I've been hearing about. Yeah. But labor is the other part. Yeah. Right? So everyone's like, how can we help? be better with your labor and be more profitable because mm. that's where it's going. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's such a, an interesting thought there about, you know, these, these smaller companies doing like these very, 
I guess you could say very kind of niche things, right? Like specific fan or specific type of signs and things like that. I mean, uh, they do want to, you know, cater to businesses that are similar to, and I, I think that's where, you know, you really get kind of a lot of wins that maybe wouldn't necessarily, you know, stand out. They're not, uh, you know, what, uh, what our 50 by 50 booth <laughs> or whatever. Right. But I, I mean, they're definitely going to make a big impact on the operation overall and, and do those types of things. So I, I'm curious for you. I mean, this is your, this is your first time here right, yep. at Modex. Um, so, you know, I know that it, I think when we talk about that size of operation um, or, or 3PL, right? I mean, it, it's tough sometimes for people maybe that are the, the owners of those or, or managing those to maybe st try and picture and, and step away to like come into a show like this and, and check out what's out there. Um, Cause you know, you get a little lost in the weeds sometimes, you know, I certainly, uh, I certainly <laughs> run around my fair share and in, in packing boxes and things like that. But uh, I mean, what advice would you give or, or how would you tell them to, to kind of manage that and, and be able to, to make the time to come out and, and check out what's going on? Yeah. It took some time just to finally slow down last night a little bit mm. and, uh, took some time to kind of reflect on that because I think maybe it was the first day that we were here. I just took for myself, it was like you said, it was my first yeah. time. I just walked. People said it was big and they did not do it justice. This yeah. is huge, right? Yeah. Um, and it can be overwhelming. So the first day I just kind of walked and got a bearing of what's here, who's here, where do I want to go? Because I know it's going to be here all week. Mm. Um, and I had this moment and I said to you, the people that need to be here aren't here. Yeah. Right? Um, and that's the people that I'm working with. Mm. And you had made that comment where you just said, like, like, yeah, but the people that need to be here are also the ones that are being greedy and yeah. staying in it and trying to make it operate. Mm. And I appreciate that. And I've been in that environment. Yeah. Um, I would say I, I didn't come to Modex previously because I thought it was for the big players with the big pockets for the big toys. Right. Mm. And this changed my mind on that. It's for everyone. It's if you're in the industry, warehousing, fulfillment, distribution, right? Like it is worthwhile to be here for, for a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. don't see it as a time away from the facility i would say make, make sure you have a plan so that things go well right yeah, make sure you yeah. have some coverage um but it's an investment in what's going on at the very least i was thinking about this as i was actually just walking over here beforehand um at the very least it can be a, a kickstarter for some brainstorming some things you can do right. there's, there's someone down down the aisle from us right now who does custom signs different than what we were talking about before mm -hmm. more like hey custom whiteboards for kpi tracking You're or right. anything like that well yeah Okay, maybe you don't want to drop four hundred dollars or whatever the yeah. cost may be on that, but that doesn't mean there isn't a mom and pop print shop in town yeah. that you can't Make print yeah. on a board for you. And that's the first, the next step over, right? So mm. for me, a lot of the time here was understanding what's going on and saying, okay, I see that. I don't think I can do that, or I don't think some of the people I'm working with right now can achieve that. But there's a way we can get there instead, mm. right? Um, or like it is in a business cycle, go look. I think you had donuts with Digi the other day. Yeah. Go look at Digi, right? Yeah. Are you ever going to need a humanoid robot? My customer, probably not, yeah. right? <laughs> but at some point in time, that leading edge is going to be what customers expect, even the small startup customer that you get 50 mm. years down the road, right? Yeah. So what are you doing now to lay the groundwork to be able to say, okay, I'm going to have to get a donation at some point. Mm. Maybe the step isn't going right to like an auto store or whatever, yeah. right? But maybe it's, Let's go from let's go from barcodes to pick to light, yeah. right? Or I guess if you work with Abco, like wave to light, and voice, yeah. or whatever, right? Like mm -hmm. there are some medium steps you can take, and maybe it's not this year, but maybe it's okay. What do I need to do so I can get there, mm -hmm. right? And starting these relationships, um, and it's tough, and we'll figure it out. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I can help support next year in a way um, for people who want to be here but can't be here, mm -hmm. um, people who. Um, maybe can cover down for each other a bit of a community to figure out what's going on yeah um, because i think there is a there is a big opportunity for for those medium-sized players to to be out here and make the connections and see what's going on and get some ideas and go home refreshed I, i'm really rejuvenated um i told you i was pivoting what i was yeah. doing a little bit and this gave me some ideas about how i can better serve the industry and better serve my customers as well just walking on the floor yeah yeah absolutely and, and yeah. it's low barrier to entry okay yeah at attendees for yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's such a, it's such a great thing to, to take the look like that because I, I mean, I, I think it is, you know, like you said, you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of step out of the, the weeds a little bit at some point. And, and, you know, I mean, 
most people, they start a business because they want to grow the business, right? right? You know, I mean, some people, you know, are very complacent, very happy, with those, you know, just staying where they are. But, you know, most people in the industry, right? I mean, they're like, they want to scale, right? And then how do I expand the people? How do I expand my square footage, right? How do I get, you know, both coast locations, <laughs> right. all, all these things, right? And, and to do that, like at some point, you have to step, you got to look and you have to look, okay, how are we going to get there? How are we going to go to the future to do that? Um, and it's important to to come out and, and see these things. And, and I think of any show, if you're in the warehouse operations field, I mean, this is where you're going to see the most and get the, the most... Uh, I mean, I want to see a bang for your buck because it's free to attend, right? But <laughs> right. I mean, your, your flight or whatever, yeah. I guess. But, you know, I, I mean, I think it, it, you see so much here and I think it's such a such a great thing. So, yeah. so Joe, I want to touch a little bit. You're your new contributor to the new warehouse as well. Yeah, All right. We, we have Joe's first blog post for the new uh, up there as well. So so why don't you tell us a little bit about and we got a couple more blog posts already that's going to be coming out soon. So why don't you tell us kind of a little bit about uh, those or, or what's kind of your, your angle is there and, and what you're looking to convey to people? Yeah, I mean, you've probably picked it up from from the conversation so far. Yeah. Um, I'm very passionate about that, that that middle market, that small market, those boutique uh, fulfillment providers that play a very, very critical role, especially in the e-commerce fulfillment mm -hmm. uh, landscape and are going to continue to play that role. Um, and what I've experienced in my time on the buy side, right, as a shipper, mm -hmm. my time within warehouses, both for large companies and small companies, is um, oftentimes the gap is knowledge. And it's... it's mm -hmm. You just don't know what you don't know, right? Part of yeah. that's experience. Part of that's how you found your way into, into yeah. fulfillment, right? Um, and I've been fortunate to have some really cool experiences in my past, in my career. Um, the varied background, spent some time in HR, spent some time at big retailers, spent some time at small retailers, regular retail, traditional, like made a ton of mistakes as a first time leader on the floor. Yeah, yeah. And so, that's how you learn, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how could I help somebody avoid those mistakes hmm. by sharing my experience with them, bringing a different perspective, very passionate about the experience i really think that like customer experience starts with that employee experience if your employee doesn't care that's how you get mistakes that's how you get errors that's yeah. where you start to bleed profitability so how do you do that right um and so that's the angle that i bring um mm. i'm looking to to service that market that's you know two three five facilities yeah. overnight expanded with a really great customer and are trying to catch the business up to what the volume has been mm. um and just help them some business tips and tricks um but with that too i also I have a bit of a fun tone to how I write. I, um, yeah. I, or it's just, it's just my personality. I'm not mm -hmm. going to let that come through. Um, and then with things like this, right? I said, I'll, I'll put together some of the some of the solutions I saw, some of the partners that I looked at or um, met for the first time. I mean, that'll be a blog that you don't have in your inbox yet, but I'm really looking forward to writing. Yeah, we'll be waiting. Yeah. Hey, if you weren't here, and this is who you are. <laughs> yeah. These these are some of the things that you missed out on and what you can, what you can think about and what you can look at, right? Um, but let me turn the mic back on you real quick. How many <laughs> okay. how many Modex is this for you? Modex is let's see. So this is probably I think it's third Modex, okay. and then and Promat is on the, the odd years, right? So uh, so between Promat and Modex, five five in total. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the what was the biggest thing to you that you saw right from year one to this year as mm -hmm. you went through? I think I heard room A ballroom. Giant warehouse A. This is the yeah. first time that they're in this. <laughs> they're in this location, so obviously a lot of expansion because it's mm. full. Yeah. Um, but what else? What, what was the big thing that stuck out to you? The big thing I think that stuck out to me. I mean, I, I think that uh, you know you're saying what else besides the A hall? But I think the <laughs> fact that they've expanded to that level um, and just seeing that progression over like, yeah. the last five years is is just uh, so interesting because it means that you know so many people and I, I think too as we talk to like a lot of these solution providers you know same same kind of thing it's, it's not necessarily that they were always in the warehouse industry right it's like they they came up with some technology and and there's a fit within our industry and i, I think it just goes to show like we're finally uh or maybe i say we're finally getting some validation right as a, as a legit industry or whatever or that people recognize and and want to be a part of and are finding that you know at the end of the day i mean especially you know since the pandemic too i mean it's a testament to how important our industry is and i think that's a a really interesting thing to see and you know seeing the amount of people that are here too um like we 
we just had uh, John uh, Paxton on uh, first this morning and the CEO of MHI and you know he was telling us that you know they probably had close to 50,000 people attend this week and that's uh, you know that's just mind-blowing to think right um, but yeah I mean in terms of what's standing out uh, beyond you know just the massive scale and the growth of the industry I think you know if I look at when I went to ProMan in 2019 um, I think just the kind of knowledge gain um, and, and maybe sophistication and in, in a sense of the the attendees coming out because it's you know in 2019 it was like wow like a robot like that's that's cool like that's that's really like could yeah. be the future or you know uh, like is that really going to pan out or anything like that and you come here and and people already know like oh I'm going to go see this robotic solution because I think this could fit for me or I'm going to go see this one and they already know this. It's less of a, less of a exploratory and more of like I'm coming to make decisions, right? And and I think uh, and even John mentioned, you know, we're, they're seeing like a large uptick in uh, in buying teams attending too as well. Um, and I think it's really interesting to to see that. But I also, I mean, I also agree with you too. I mean, I think it's great to see all the the little in between ones too, and and kind of the the fostering a little bit of the startups too. We have the startup pavilion around the corner here um, with some some good folks over there. We know the guys at uh, Response and the two boxes are over there. Arvist um, and uh, Tact too as well. Packurate. Um So a lot of interesting things happening. But if, I think if you look at that startup pavilion. And you look at those type of solutions, right? Uh, not much to do with robotics, right, or automation, but it's those kind of foundational processes in between and those little things that are going to make a big difference in the uh, in your operation in your business. And I think that's interesting to see too, as well. So, so yeah, that's kind of my take a little bit. And I'll say, uh, I mean, because everybody wants to talk about robotics, but you know the. <laughs> Uh, from the robotics front, I mean the the trailer container loading unloading. I mean that's that's huge for me. That's such a big deal. Yeah, yeah that was a big thing I asked about beforehand. It's an area of the business I haven't spent as much time on, mm. but was very interesting. You see a ton that that the automation and robotics started in the pack, right? Yeah, and it's the easiest thing to offer. It's mm. the most tangible piece. Um, but the heavy lifting in a place that people do not like to work in the warehouse. Right? Yeah, is in loading and unloading, mm. and to see some of those solutions was really cool. Yeah, um, and they're and not and it. I think the cool thing is it wasn't just copycat stuff, right? Yeah, it's all like different form factors. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. You know, ride in, conveyor, manual pick, fully auto, you know, yeah. automatic robotic arms. Very cool. Um, but yeah, it took us a while to to mention the startup event. Mm. I, I was really impressed with the startup event. I think that's a really good call out that I didn't, that I didn't think about is what those teams, right? Mm. So the, the group here at Modex and MHI that, that invited them and, and curated that section there, right? Right? It's not robotics, but what are they mm. focused on? They're, validating for me to an extent right yeah. they're focused on all the things that support a warehouse of fulfillment mm. be more profitable mm -hmm. right? you mentioned the tax team right like yeah they're focusing a lot on like labor movement, labor plan what are they doing talk about responses like how do you consolidate and control your spending when it comes to consumables things that you are not mm. that you're not making yeah maybe you're marking up but like yeah. you're not making money on or you could be making more money on if you're mm. a better deal right that's a really great democratization of that process right mm. and they're not taking anything from them. they're just saying let's make your life easier you yeah. use line you, you use you line yeah you use Amazon business whatever you use mm. give it to you in one platform and make it easy for your team yeah right um and then same with the people at two boxes right everyone's headache is returns but every yeah. customer one who can do returns really well yeah right and if you can take administrative time our decision focus on that like, you can reinvest that back in your business right so mm. Kyle and the team have done a really great job. Yeah, two bucks is killing it. Yeah. yeah and really yeah. fun to watch them grow over the yeah. last year. So, um, all in all, a really, really good show. Um, yeah. we, we were with some industry friends on Monday night. Mm -hmm. and I think Parth asked the question what was the coolest thing you saw on day one? We've been here for four days. Mm -hmm. We've talked to a bunch of people over the course of four days. What's, yeah. the, what's the coolest thing that you've seen? Oh, man. That's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> putting me on the spot there. I mean, I, I think the coolest thing, I said coolest, um, I don't know. It's hard to point out one. I mean, I love I love the Slip Robotics solution. Like, I think that I, like I can just see 
if that and i know they're getting like a lot of good traction on that but i mean if you can just get the right kind of ltl loads synced up with carriers and stuff like that and have that going through the ecosystem i mean i think that can make such a huge huge difference um in, in a big time so so i would say that but uh yeah what else is cool i mean there's so there's so many things that it's so hard to pick i mean there's so many exhibitors here but um yeah i mean i would say that is definitely one and i think resident link too we did, we did some stuff with them but i think they're the wireless charging for the forklift is is so awesome because uh, I, I mean we talked about those little things that make a difference and, yep. and and you know a little thing is you know someone forgetting to plug the forklift in at the end of the shift and coming in the next shift and there's not enough battery right that's so not I, a little thing that's a big thing you're giving me flashbacks yeah, yeah i mean it was a little action right but it was a big big consequence so yeah so yeah i think that definitely but yeah man so it's a pleasure yeah have you come by um people want to get in touch connect with him on LinkedIn, right? Uh, but 1248, you got 1248.com, right? Uh, dot .co. Oh, dot .co. Uh, the future. Yeah. More just late to the game buying domain names. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, the M is dead. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. But, All right, uh, yeah. Joe. I appreciate that. Um, go to LinkedIn. Don't go to the website. I have yeah. to do some rework on there. Uh, oh, okay. It's, it's, right. uh, when you and I first met, mm. it tells that story. It doesn't yeah. tell the story about where I've come over the last year and mm. what I'm really finding where I can make an impact, um, yeah. which has been really fun. All but right. appreciate Thanks, all of your support. Appreciate you having me on. Appreciate what you Always, do man. for the uh, community here. Yeah, Congratulations absolutely. Congratulations on five years on the podcast. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you for coming by. Good to see you this week and get your takes as well. And check out his uh, blog post on the newwarehouse.com and there'll be some more coming as well. So, Joe, thank you very much for stopping by, sir. Yeah, and if you haven't done already, I want to give a shout out to the two guys behind the mic helping out this week. They're behind the cameras. Helping oh, out yeah, week. yeah. Shout out Ricky. Shout out Mike. Ferrara. Great work on Thanks social. Thanks, team. Yeah. All right, Joe. Thank you very much, Appreciate sir. It. We'll see you at the next Have time. a good one.